Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Extra Diet Herb by Science, and today we are going to talk about making your first project. So you have your fleece, it's been washed, maybe you dyed it, and now what do you do with it? Well, some of you already have 50 projects lined up, and that's great, but what if you don't? Well, I have the first project for you, and I'm going to do this tutorial series so that you can make this lovely shrug. This is called the Yuna Shrug. And I designed this here in Korea, and I think I came out with it in May of this year. Um, what's really nice about this is it's kind of a bulky yarn, so you don't have to worry so much about gauge. It can be a single or it can be a two-ply yarn. It doesn't really matter. Um, and it's also really great for knitters who might still be kind of getting used to the whole knitting thing because gauge isn't super important, and you don't have to knit this very consistently to get this look. Um, so combined with being a beginner at spinning and a beginner at knitting, you know, you should be able to make this uh, particular shrug very easily with your first yarn. And uh, like I said, this tutorial video series will sort of help walk you through the various steps uh, from start to finish, including uh, just carding and spinning the yarn itself. So when I when I'm wearing this, uh, the way that I have this top piece set up, it's set so that it, it kind of fits right here on my shoulder so it doesn't fall down too much. However, you can, you can adjust this very easily with um, whatever ribbon you use at the top so that you can wear it more up around you like this. Right, so it's a little bit more like a cloak shrug. Um, or you can also open it up more so that it fits or it sits slightly lower on your shoulders so that it, it looks more attractive if you're wearing you know, a particular type of shirt underneath. Um, so it has a lot of versatility. And it also has these really great cables that are almost imperceptible. Um, but the reason why I designed it with cables is because I wanted to show the fact that you can have a slightly textured uh, yarn in terms of color and still pull off a really nice cable. So I'm going to fold this up and show you up here next to the camera. I'm going to focus it so you can see it a little bit. So um, right here, there's a, the big cable in the middle. And then on either end, this side and this side, there are two mini cables that run up and down it. And at the very top, I just have a piece of recycled uh, silk from India. That I'm keeping it together with at the top, and this is that. This part is actually entirely up to you. You can have it or not; it doesn't really matter. So let's actually talk about the fleece. I'm going to be using the same fleece that I used for this project again, but I'm going to dye the fleece instead of um, this. This was just the original white fleece that I that I uh, combined with some colored merino, um, but this time I'm going to dye the fleece before I spin it, or well, before I card it. So, um, like in the previous video series where I talked about um, opening up locks and, you know, processing that part, we're going to do that part together. So, I have my fleece and I've already dyed it. And I have sort of uh, like cranberry reds mixed, with, mixed in with some light oranges, like red oranges here. It looks not quite the right color in the video. Um, I, will, I will take some pictures of this before I, I uh, actually get into it because I will also post this on the blog because I know some of you really like to see pictures. And there are some light pieces and some dark pieces. Now this is part of the reason why I also suggested um, if you're going to be making bats to pull from pull pieces from various parts of the fleece so that if you do dye it afterwards some parts of the fleece won't take dye as much as others, and part of that has to do with um, if there's leftover lanolin on there, it might not take it as much as places where there's less lanolin. Also, if there's any kind of discoloration, there will be a color shifting happening. So, um, you know, you want to take that into consideration uh, earlier in the stage so that when you've planned out how you're going to do your project, you sort of know what you're getting into. So here's the fleece that I'm going to use, and I have a little bit of merino left over from a dye job that I did way long time ago. 
it's sort of this coppery reddish brown color and I really love how it's turning out um, so far I, I put it through the drum carter to uh, get more of a unified color overall so this is going to be carded with this at some point in the future so that there's some more color gradations instead of just all one you know berry very red color, it's going to have um, some color variation. I'm also going to add in some things like Angelina, maybe a little bit of silk, just to give a little bit more, maybe even a little bit of Firestar, just to add more visual interest to the yarn itself. Um, and it's a lot more fun. And you know, you don't have to add these things, you can just stick with the wool, or you can add in more things or different things, and it's completely up to you. All right. Um, and then the last thing is you need about six ounces of wool or a finished amount. So you'll probably want to start with about seven to eight ounces of wool for this particular shrug. And then the only reason why I say this is because uh, through the spinning process, well, through the carding process and the spinning process, you're going to lose a little bit of the fiber because some pieces you're not going to want to use or like for the plying, if you're going to ply, you're going to lose some yardage because there's uh, the twist for the plies that's going to shorten the yarn a little bit um, and then you know cast on cast off and because it's one of a kind you always want to shoot for a little bit more than you know that you're going to need because sometimes um, something happens and it's like oh I thought it was going to be this much but actually because of the way I'm knitting or whatever I need more so I, I always like to err on the side of caution rather than otherwise. So we're going to shoot for eight ounces. I've got, I think, 160 grams of this fleece. And I think this is about 20 grams. So I'm going to look through uh, the rest of my fleece to see what else I want to add to this to get it up to the uh, seven or eight ounces needed for the total project. So. If you have any other questions about what to do at this stage, like how to um, dye or whatever, you know, I can I can provide some insight. I just dyed this with food coloring and vinegar, and it smells like a clean fleece. It doesn't really smell like vinegar at all. Um, and this is actually very color color wash safe, so it's not going to bleed and it's not going to fade over a significant period of time. It will, but it's not going to fade for a very long time so you don't have to worry about that um, but yeah if you have any other questions let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos let me know in the comments below you can also follow me on Twitter and fan me on Facebook uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe all that is below and um, if you have any other suggestions or comments you know you can always email me and that will also be in the description below just in case I know some people really get in depth with what they want to talk to me about and 500 characters isn't enough for them. So that's totally fine. I, I reply to emails very regularly. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.